Hello and welcome to my review of Shalimar, uh, the famous Shalimar by Gula, Gulain, I can never pronounce their name. Um, this is a request by uh, the lovely Victoria Smith, who's left me lovely comments. Um, so this one's for you, Victoria. Um, as I just wanted to clarify something, sorry, if you can hear my bird twittering in the background, I can't shut him up today. He seems to know when I'm recording and he just seems to go crazy. Shh! He won't. Uh, so Victoria Smith, yeah, this is for you. Um, if you know, if anyone's got a request of something that I have in my collection, I have a collection video, and I haven't yet reviewed it, I will happily push it to the front of the queue. So uh, that's what I'm doing today. So there's a lot that can be said about this fragrance. Shalimar, it is just so incredibly famous. Um, it's an oriental spicy perfume that was created in 1925. That alone in itself is just, to me, something amazing. A perfume that was made in 1925 and today still stands as being something so iconic and amazing and so many people must have, you know, memories connected to it and I certainly do. Just very quickly, this is the one fragrance in my life, I smelt it when I was 16 on a lady walked past me and, I'd, and I was completely intoxicated and my head turned and I never asked her what it was and um, I regretted it and I've done that a few times with fragrances so now that I'm like 32 I still will never not let somebody go by without asking what their fragrance is if I like it. But I smelt it again when I was 21. It came to me straight away and I literally ran after this lady and said to her, you have to tell me what it is you're wearing. And she told me it was Shalimar. Then I discovered it. I got it for myself. Uh, I had to, it's too nostalgic not to. Uh, I could go on about that for ages, but I'm not going to. Um, I will tell you what's in it. This is such an incredible fragrance. Uh, it needs to be smelled to be experienced, I say that a lot. So the top notes are lemon, bergamot, cedar, mandarin and citruses. The heart notes are rose, vetiver, jasmine, patchouli and violet. And the base notes are civet, I'll talk about that in a second, musk, tonka, incense, vanilla, a poponax, which is otherwise known as myrrh, it's a resin, um, sandalwood and leather. So it's a huge array of things from all over the place. You've got flowers, you've got musk, you've got resins, you've got fruits. Um, it's a ton of things. Um, and I'll just quickly say about the composition, it seems very jumbled. I mean, Perfume obviously doesn't follow any rules, but it's I, th I find it very strange to have a, a cedar wood in the top, to have patchouli in the heart. Patchouli is usually a base. I mean, not all the time, obviously, but usually it's it's a base. Um, so you've got some very... It's a bit of a mixture. But, um, yeah, when you smell it, it's, it's something else. So I'll show you my box. I have... This is the 50ml... Eau de Parfum version. There are tons of versions and the bottle has been reincarnated over and over and over again. They keep changing it. Um, the one that I have happens to be my personal favourite. Um, there's been all different kinds. They t tend to follow the same shape but they do change the styling of it. So um, I unfortunately don't have the Eau de Toilette so I can't do a comparison as such but I'm going to do the Eau de Parfum. So, here's the box. Mine's a little bit bashed. Mine's kind of been through the wars. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a very dark blue box. Uh, they always have this little, kind of, it's like a little necklace, I, I suppose. Uh, Shalimar, Eau de Parfum, Gula. Uh, and it has a little inscription on the back that says, Once upon a time, there was an everlasting silage, or silage, which means how far your perfume projects off of your skin. A few drops of Shalimar in a new bottle. This is one of those perfumes where you can actually buy the pure parfum of it. You can get a 7ml, costs, I don't know, extortionate amounts, but you'd literally need like a dab like that. 
It is an extremely long lasting and projecting perfume. It's one of those ones that can, it's like a circumference around you. It's very, very impressive and just amazing. Uh, so yeah, that's that. Kind of shiny, gold bits. Uh, the bottle that I have is, as I said, my personal favourite. It's, it's really cute. It's completely glass. Looks like this. It's glass all the way to the bottom. It's, it's lovely. It's kind of like wings, <laughs> I think. Uh, the lid's got this kind of tiny leather necklace on itself and it's, a, it's attached to the lid. Can't get it off. There you go. And it's a kind of transparency blue lid and it says Gulin or Gulain Paris or Paris. So, um, yeah, the bottle's got a, a symbol on it. Gula, they're just kind of excellent to me. They, they do everything with such class. They are an actual perfumer as opposed to a designer that makes clothes and has a perfume line. They make perfume, so they are at the top of their game and they're just amazing. I'm not sure what that symbol is, but there you go. There's Shalimar on the front. I'm not actually sure what Shalimar means. I probably should have researched that before I did this review. In fact, I'm going to do it right now. Wait there. Sorry, so I'm back. Uh, I should have done some research before, but you know, sometimes you just don't. So I had a quick look at what it actually means. Um, there's quite conflicting information. There's some things that say it means abode of love. And some things say that it means strong and beautiful. For the most part, I'm going to go with the strong and beautiful because that's probably exactly what this is. It's definitely strong and it's definitely beautiful, depending on what kind of fragrances you like. So, as always, I've had it drying on this hand and I'm going to spray it fresh on this hand. Um, it just needs a tiny touch to get the effect of it. Um, so while, while that's kind of drying, it's dry on this hand, but it's drying on this hand, I'll just talk about a few of the notes. Um, so, civet. Civet to me, if you've ever smelled it on your own, it comes from the civet cat. It's, it's going to sound really disgusting, but it's an animal and it's excreted from their anal glands. How lovely. Um, but what it does in perfumery is it gives things a kind of... And like animalic kind of dry tone. Um, it does add to the thing. On its own it's positively disgusting but when it's blended in the right way as with Shalimar it just adds that touch of something. Animalic is really hard to describe because obviously there's tons of animals and the smells of cows are horrible and the smells of horses is nice I think and it's it just gives a kind of animalic tone and what I'll say when you first smell Shalimar is you really get the lemon uh, and the civet so it has a kind of strange animalic lemon tone but it's backed up by a huge amount of vanilla and a powderiness um, it's probably I would say the epitome of powdery fragrances Shalimar it is it kind of creates a cloud around you of vanilla powder with a tinge of lemon. Um, obviously there's a lot of other stuff in it, there's patchouli in it and rose and there's all these other flowers but the main things I get is the top notes is, is full of you know citruses and bergamot and lemon and I, I get that straight away. You can really smell the civet, it has a, a real deepness to it, this fragrance. Even though it's like fluffy, it's very fluffy and vanilla-y and cloud-like. When you smell it like this, there is a real deepness to it, a, a kind of like a darker side that you don't necessarily smell when it's in the air around you. When it's in the air around you, as I said, it's kind of dreamy. It's like a cloud. Um, it's, I don't know, it's just a very powdery, gorgeous fragrance that I would probably use for bedtime. It's going to send me off into dreams with lovely wafts of powder and it's kind of like a grown-up baby powder. Does that make sense? It's baby baby powder but with a few added adult notes like lemon and a few woods and patchouli. So it, it's, it's very different. It's, it's absolutely beautiful. I mean there's probably been tons of stuff said before me um, but 
it holds a special place in my heart and it's, it's definitely something that's just it's just so pleasant to smell and some people I've heard or I've seen written down call it you know granny and things like that which I, I find quite offensive I don't I don't think it should be associated with mature women or a certain time 1925 can you imagine people walking around in the 1940s with this on like that they were spoiled that's amazing I don't even know what other perfumes were around at that time I need to look it up but this just proves it stands the test of time it's still such an iconic fragrance and it really just lasts forever and ever and ever and as it dries it goes so much softer, it goes more ethereal, it gets more sweet because um, when you first spray it, it's not necessarily the most sweetest of vanillas but it, the vanilla makes it smooth but when it dries here, it turns I would say almost gourmand smelling, almost foody um, the fact that it's an oriental spicy I, I find a bit strange I wouldn't call this necessarily spicy in any way I would call it an oriental vanilla, it should probably be reclassified, I don't know if that's what it is in, in elsewhere, but my sources say it's oriental spicy. So yeah, it's it smells very musky, it's only ever so slightly woodsy, it's, it's basically based on vanilla-y, powdery citrus and I don't really know what else to say about it, uh, it's just... It's just amazing, I don't know, I'm gushing over it. I, I don't like to do that because I like to give a fair review, but it, it's one of those things that it stand, stood the test of time and it deserves to be noticed and that's basically it. That was for you, Victoria Smith, and anyone else that wants to watch it. I hope I've done it justice because there's a lot of talk about this fragrance as it's so iconic, but here you go. That's it. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll speak to you guys very soon. Bye-bye.